So, uh, life's emotional sometimes. Yep. Um, well, un- unless you're Caleb. Unless you're Caleb, in which, to that, life is only about one thing and one thing only. Finding and killing John Connor. Exactly. Whereas here, with What Culture Wrestling, uh, they bring up ten emotional WWE moments that made fans cry. I watched professional wrestling. Uh, um, there have been phases where I watched it like religiously, mm-hmm. and then times where I tapered off and I didn't pay attention at all, and then I go back and watch it religiously again. Right now, I'm kind of in the middle. I watch it and I pay attention to it, but not to the same extent. Like you can tell, like uh, I can name a lot of the people who are wrestling right now for WWE, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I don't know all of them and I don't know their storylines. And honestly. I love AJ Styles, but I do not know where his storyline is right now. I think he's fighting Dean Ambrose. I mean, I don't know, but I I have never followed wrestling super super closely. Um there was a point where I would just be like this was this was early in John Cena. Oh. He was yeah, he was still, you know, the the thug and not, you know, upstanding, you know, all-American whatever. <clears throat> um, but you know, I would tune in. And I'd be like, "Okay, this is neat," and it would be something that I would watch and you know, occasionally laugh at and just be like, "Oh, why did this happen?" Never really got super big into it. Mm. Michael, what about you? What's wrestling? There you go. So yeah. now, okay, so you now, have a big now, fan, now, a kind of fan. Now, now wait a, a minute. And, now and, hold on, <laughs> Micah. I'm gonna say two words to you. Miss Tessmacher. Uh, there it is. See, he, he knows. Uh, no, I ha- I have friends that are into it, so I have seen a little bit, but not much. Okay. Miss um, Tessmacher was my favorite. There you go. Well, there I mean, you Velvet go. Sky was in there, too, so that's pretty mm-hmm. good. Okay. Anyway, but uh, it's like, yeah, Micah, come on. You know more than you're letting on. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's that, was, that was clearly a joke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh I've cried a few moments in WWE. Uh, one was um, I cried when WWE wasted uh, Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page was my favorite wrestler in WCW, mm-hmm. and I was anticipating him coming to WWF because you know people have been talking. Oh, he signed with WWE. I'm like, oh, how's he gonna debut? And then they did the stalker angle with the Undertaker's wife. Whoa! And no. they made DDP the stalker, and I was just like, no. 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 So basically, it's like, all right, so not only did they make him a stalker, they set him up for The Undertaker to just destroy him. Yeah, they made him Yeah. Uh, they made him a, a tasty meal for the big dog in the yard. Uh, which is, this was actually during Biker Taker. Like, Biker oh. Undertaker. When Undertaker, mm. instead of being the mythological dead man who follows Paul Bearer with an urn, now instead he was... Um, which, to be fair, is kind of his best bit. Oh, no doubt. No doubt yeah. about it. And then there's <clears throat> the biker version, which, no. Which, okay, at the beginning, I was excited to see, oh, Undertaker, <sighs> he's in a new persona. And then it wore thin. Quick. Yes. And then it didn't end as quick as it wore thin. Yeah. So, Yeah. Uh, but anyway, during during my times w- watching WWE, I've had moments. Uh, let's see if any of them are on here. Here we go. And I, I thought of one. When Eddie Guerrero passed away, that one got me. That one got me, too. Yep. <clears throat> I did like the episode of the A-Team where Hulk Hogan guest starred, and <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> he picked up a car. This surprises me not at all. Not at all. Here we go. Damn it, Hulk Hogan. There aren't many things that can make a wrestling fan ah! cry, with the exception of Damien Sandow's career and the phrase involving Heidenreich. WWE's adult fans are a jaded lot, often championing villains over faces and rejecting sincerity like it's bad scampi. But there are some moments where WWE has melted even the most calloused heart. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and with a single tear running down my cheek, these are 10 WWE moments that made the fans cry. Number 10, Edge retired. When the rated R superstar uh... became the retired R superstar, fans were shocked. There was very little pomp, no warning. Edge came out to the ring and dropped a bomb on people. 
When he said he had to go, you could hear people cry out in shock. Edge then delivered an extremely heartfelt 10 minute speech during which he thanked Christian, his best friend of 27 years for helping him come to terms with it all and went through a short list of his career from the brew to flash photography to live sex celebrations. <laughs> As the crowd took to their feet to give him a thunderous standing ovation, men around the world went a bit quiet then went like, oh, no, it's, um, it's allergies, it's allergies. <clears throat> it's, it's nothing, don't, don't look at me. <laughs> Number nine, yep. Jerry Lawler's heart attack. Mm. Say what you like about Michael Cole, and many people do in capital letters using words that would terrify a docker, but he handled himself <laughs> with class and dignity on September 10th, 2012. On that night, Jerry the King Lawler had a heart attack live on air. It was left to Michael Cole to keep the audience at home informed. <clears throat> it's clear from his slightly wavering voice and his difficulty with maintaining eye contact with the camera that King meant and still means a lot to Michael Cole and maintaining a professional composure so as not to worry the audience at home, whilst not knowing whether or not his good friend had died, is a heroic feat. It's mm. one of the most effective babyface turns in WWE history. Number eight, Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth reunite. Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth were the best on-screen pairing since Sable, boob joke. And when they got married at SummerSlam, hearts were warmed by the only WWE wedding to ever not end in betrayal and body slams. Then Savage turned heel, and left Elizabeth for the sensational Sherry. Elizabeth was heartbroken and would be reduced to watching on from the crowd, sad to see her guy fall so far. After Savage lost a retirement match against the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 7, Sherry turned on Savage, literally kicking him while he was down. Elizabeth said, that's all I can stands, I can't stands no more, and cleared the ring. Savage and Elizabeth reunited to the delight of the crowd. What a woman and what a man. <laughs> Number seven, I'm sorry. I love you. Everything comes to an end. Even you, the viewer, watching this at home. Good luck with that. WrestleMania <laughs> 24 and Ric Flair was wrestling with his long career on the line. If he lost, he would be forced to retire. And it was Shawn Michaels that was tasked with the job of finally taking out Old Yeller. Fans could predict oh. it was coming, but they weren't quite ready for how it went down. With tears in his eyes, Flair staggered to his feet, seeing his career flash in front of his eyes. Shawn Michaels looked across the ring from him and said, I'm sorry, I love you and ended it with sweet chin music, which I think is how Old Yeller ended as well. As soon as the pinfall oh, sounded, HBK kissed his hero on the forehead <laughs> and immediately vacated the ring, leaving Flair alone with thousands of emotional fans. Which oh. leads to... Number six, Ric Flair's retirement ceremony. A bigger send-off the WWE has never seen. Every superstar on the roster came out to pay their respects to Ric Flair in his 40-plus year career, mm -hmm. as did his family and old rivals and allies from his past, like Arn Anderson, Harley Race, Ricky Steamboat, and even The Undertaker, who never broke kayfabe, made an exception, offering the knee to Flair and the most demonic and lovely hug in the history of time. Yep. Not only was this all just too much, but it was the little things like Flair strutting one last time or dropping an elbow on his jacket that really plucked the heartstrings. <laughs> of course, Ric Flair went on to wrestle like a dozen more matches, but... <laughs> <laughs> Number five, no, Lillian Garcia sings the national anthem post 9-11. I don't really have I remember this. jokes about this entry. Two days after the attacks, the SmackDown taping was one of the first, if not the first, mass assembly of its kind in America. With people unsure whether the country was still under attack, Vince called terrorism a jabroni and went ahead with the show, resulting in a highly emotional smackdown, which are two words that don't really seem to go well together. But no moment from the show was more powerful than Lillian Garcia's rendition of the national anthem. With the entire locker room on the entrance ramp, she came close to breaking down, but she powers her way through the song. Rewatching it is still chilling, especially when she bellows, our flag was still there. Number four, 21 and one. When Brock oh. Lesnar beat the streak, the wrestling world was briefly shocked into silence. How? What? Why would they? <laughs> and then the disbelief went one of two ways, either to furious rage or crushing sadness. Undertaker was beat up. That was obvious to anyone who was watching. He had suffered a severe concussion during his match with Lesnar and struggled to make it to his feet. No one came out to help him because it was scripted to be his moment. Dazed and confused and with his streak over, the Undertaker suddenly seemed a lot more like Mark Calloway, and fans were moved to tears by watching their hero walk unsteadily into the mist. Number three, Chris Benoit and Chavo Guerrero weep at Eddie's tribute show. Eddie Guerrero yep. died on November the 13th, 2005, a few days before he was scripted to win the World Championship on SmackDown. The WWE organized a tribute show the next night in his honor, charting his career, but no sight was more quietly devastating than the sight of Chris Benoit openly weeping for his friend and Chavo Guerrero, Eddie's nephew, shedding a tear. All yep. macho posturing aside, Benoit delivered an address to camera talking about how much he loved Eddie, during which he broke down and wept, no doubt inviting fans at home to do the same. 18 months earlier, both men had embraced as champions at WrestleMania 20. Within three years of that moment of triumph, 
Not one, but both men would be dead. Mm -hmm. Number two, JR announces Owen Hart's passing. Owen Hart passed away after an accident at Over the Edge pay-per-view in 1999, falling from the rafters when a harness that was set to lower him to the ring gave way. The live crowd Ooh. was shocked and confused, not knowing if what they'd seen was a work. The audience at home, however, hadn't seen anything at all. The news was broken by JR, who told the crowd that Owen Hart had tragically died. The tribute to him the next night on Raw was incredibly touching, but there was nothing more devastating than having the news suddenly dropping on you. That devastation receding into confusion and sadness at the loss of a great wrestler in his prime. Number one, Connor the Crusher's tribute video. Oh, okay. my God. Oh, that is really... Uh, watch it. It's desperately sad, but also somewhat life-affirming that even in a company as provably stupid as the WWE, when poo rains from the ceiling, midgets dress as bulls, and men simulate sex with dummies in coffins, even they can take time to make a little kid's life immeasurably better. They gave Conor McCaleg, aka Conor the Crusher, not only an amazing WrestleMania experience, but also a pinfall victory over Triple H, <laughs> which is the most precious gift yep. of all. Watch the video, it's truly lovely. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to hey, like, look, Triple share, H got a kid over. And you can even follow me on yeah. Twitter here. That's, that's I'm Adam something. from WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon. The, um, the Eddie Guerrero one uh, got, oh, got me because I, oh. because, mm. uh, okay, also, um, Sasha Banks, who is uh, one of the top wrestlers for the WWE right now, mm -hmm. One of her uh, one of her dreams was to see her <clears throat> hero Eddie Guerrero live. Yep. She was there, and she was not sure, uh, and she did not know that Eddie had passed away. Oh, jeez. Instead, when people were carrying Rip Eddie signs, and she thought that they were, you know, kind of a play on, you know, because Eddie was feuding with the Undertaker at the oh, time. Oh yeah, yeah. And then when it was announced, she said that she couldn't even bring words to her lips, that she was so shocked. And all, and she just, uh, next thing you know, she found herself on the floor just crying. And her mother and her mother had to pick her up and hold, and, and hold her. Oh, and good Lord. You see, I've, <clears throat> you see, I, uh, I've had, I've had a few shocking moments like that with, with professional wrestling. That just made me. That made me uh, like Owen Hart. When when it happened, to Owen Hart. I was a pretty big fan of Owen Hart. I I liked the matches he'd had with his brother Bret Hart, and also with uh, his rivalry Stone Cold Steve Austin. That coincidentally broke Steve Austin's neck. Um, and then, well, when when Owen Hart died to me, that was the first like truly big tragic bad thing that had happened in professional wrestling to me mm -hmm. everything else everything else uh before then i i can't remember anything bad happening and everything else until then uh and everything else up until that point i didn't know about because you know i didn't you know the internet didn't exist oh yeah for me and i was pretty much just uh i had to go with what what i could see but <sighs> yeah, I, you, and also Connor the Crusher. Have you have you seen that? I haven't. Uh, Connor the Crusher uh, had uh, an inoperable form of cancer, mm -hmm. and he was going to die. So WWE granted his wish and gave him the uh, and pretty much gave him the experience of a lifetime. Brought him in. He met every wrestler. Every wrestler signed his shirt. He got to go to WrestleMania 30, and he watched as his favorite wrestler, Daniel Bryan, won uh, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in front of everybody. And it was, and I watched that video, and I was just like, "Whoa!" That <clears throat> it, you know, you have those moments where you're just you you can't you 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 want to like you want to take a moment to assess things, but mm -hmm. your mind's not letting you, your mind's just like, wow, just your mind pretty much just, uh, it stops itself to, th uh, it, it, it's like it stops and it just recollects that it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, how you equate your OCD sometimes, you know, your mind just yeah. stops on something. Yep. That's, that's how I felt with that. It was just, to me, it was so emotional. It just caught me. <clears throat> and, <sighs> yeah, it, 
<laughs> Professional wrestling is not supposed to make you feel that way, man. Professional wrestling is not supposed to make you feel things? What are you talking about? Yeah, pretty much. That's <laughs> that's my mentality. Yeah, just just allergies. It's, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Just, just <clears throat> don't I know suddenly have about. a lot of things in my eye for some reason. Just some both s- eyes. It's in both eyes. There's there's some sort of fluid. Who's been chopping onions? Who's it's been not, chopping onions? It's not me. Hmm. You know how I feel about onions. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Same I'm aware. here. I hate onions. <clears throat> I blame you. Blame it on the onions. Blame it on really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm never cooking for you guys. Clearly, this is your fault. Clearly. Clearly. No, but seriously, I was thinking about, nope, not now. Mm-mm. I'm going to make you all some chili. Ain't doing it now. Oh, well, There's well. onions in it. Yeah, there is onions in it. <laughs> you can't even tell. All right. <laughs> well, everyone, that was 10 emotional WWE moments that made fans cry by what culture wrestling. Um... What Culture Wrestling, they're doing a lot of really good things. I mean, they, they've got their own promotion, and they're mm-hmm. and they're killing it. They're doing tremendous uh, with it. I mean, they they managed to bring in Kurt Angle, Matt Hardy, Cody Rhodes, uh, friggin' just uh, Alberto Del Rio. Well, Alberto El Patron, that he's now known as now because Del Rio is marketed through WWE. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> and and they're, they're kind of becoming... I think what TNA should have been, should have become, where they focus more on the wrestling. The storylines are secondary. Yeah. Whereas the wrestling is up front, which is what TNA was for a long time. And now they are, they, they're, I think pretty much right now, the, in terms of internet wrestling, I think they're the best out there. Yeah, I can see that. <clears throat> but anyway. I think that's enough of, enough of me blabbering and potentially blubbering. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> thank you all once again. Check the link to the original video down below. Check out What Culture. Uh, they are awesome. Uh, give them a give them a try. And signing off for the Renegades, I am Nate. I'm Ben. Micah. And we will see you all later. Take care, Internet. Hey.